I'm Rick Harsh, and uh, I wrote this book, uh, a memoir, called Arjun and the Good Snake. Um, you can read right there, I hope, what it says, being an ideological account of six weeks in India without alcohol. And I'm just going to uh, read here uh, about the concept of Maya because it's probably um, one of the most misunderstood um, uh, fragments of, of the intellectual genius that has ever come out of any place, actually. So, here's a short bit that explains it pretty clearly, I think. Most of all, having studying Hinduism, I learned the true meaning of the word Maya without having to alter my own nature, to convert, to stop drinking and smoking. For as, whereas the latter two might be of great benefit to me, they are of me in a Spenglerian sense, and thus must depart that way, whatever that means. Maya is commonly thought to mean that the material world is illusory which is strange because that would mean an entire ancient civilization of an unknown number of nameable facets fails to transcend an argument that could be ended by the simple act of banging one's head against a suburb. No, Maya is the comprehension that man's relationship with the material world, with any or all worlds, is illusory. This is most easily conveyed by observing men knowingly sentenced to mysterious death, a known finitude, compulsively acquiring objects, compulsively laboring intensely in meaningless to, meaninglessness to acquire the ability to acquire. But no lectures are necessary here, only that I relate what I consider the central conundrum of Hindu philosophy as laid out by Shankara in the 8th century AD, illuminated by his metaphor of the serpent and the rope. The scenario is meant to explicate the concept of Maya, but in my view it is more effective in discouraging our attempts to comprehend the world, phenomenal or not. A man is walking along a forest path when suddenly, too suddenly to alter his footfall, he realizes that he is about to step on a snake a deadly venomous serpent. He is filled with fright. That which fluctuates through a man uh, about to die actually does fluctuate through him in the second before his foot lands on a rope. He has mistaken a length of rope for a deadly snake. In reality, he merely saw and stepped on a rope. But another reality occurred, his fear his rush of sensations regarding imminent death, which were no less real than the rope. The rope is reality. The snake-induced sensation represents man's false relationship with the real. Yet back in the year 2000, while I was in India visiting my family, I was also gathering snake stories, one of them told by my sister-in-law, Bindu, who once was talking with friends, walking with friends on the outskirts of Bangalore, when she saw a black and red rope that she was about to kick playfully, when one of her friends snatched her away, for the rope was actually a venomous McClellan's coral snake. She was briefly traumatized just afterwards, and likely will remember the incident until she dies, which will probably not be from the poison of a McClellan's coral snake. But would her realization of the real represent enlightenment in the sense of the destruction of Maya? That seems too simple to me. The analogy become a western hognose lying on its back in Texas, playing dead. In other words, though I believe Shankara's parable to be apt enough in illustrating the concept of Maya, I remain skeptical regarding the concept of Maya, even if it surpasses any other human attempt I am aware of toward bringing mankind closer to an understanding of reality. It's the parable of the serpent and the rope. And in simplest terms, it explains a very profound concept. Thank you. Um, 
I'm feeling kind of strange right now. So I'm going to go.